Welcome to No BSTS, episode 21. And in this one, we are going to take a look at TypeScript and how to do TypeScript for common React hooks, all the basic React hooks. Let's get right into it. So the first thing I wanna show off is this really great TypeScript cheat sheet that has a whole section on hooks and how to use them. That's linked to in the description. But of course, if you're here, you're probably gonna to wanna to see me walk through this. So let's do that. All right, let's go back over to our VS Code and pick up where we left off in our really cool app. All right, now also let's go check it out in the browser and see, yeah, this is pretty much where we left off. We got a nice heading up here, a box, and then some list items, and they have a nice little callback on them. Okay, so let's start experimenting with some state. Uh, now, if you want basic state, there's actually almost no difference. So let's just take a, you know, a checked state or something like that, and you're gonna get set checked state. And then you're gonna have you know, use state, and you just say true, if this is a Boolean, and that's absolutely fine. In this case, all I need to do is just bring in use state, that'd be helpful. Okay. And that also works for simple types like a string. It can be any string, it can be a number, and it can that can hold any number. But let's take the case where you are downloading a payload from a server, very common case. In that case, you might wanna start with something like null, and you want the value there to be either the payload type or null. So how do you do that? Well, first let's define a payload type. And in our payload, we're gonna have a text. It's got a string in it. And we'll call this payload. And we'll have set payload. And the way that we're gonna do this is we're gonna use the generic and then we're gonna say that we either have a payload or we've got null, right? And so that's a way to keep TypeScript happy about what's gonna go in to this payload. So let's go and create a example payload. We'll go over here to public, create a new file, data.json, make it some JSON, it's gonna have text in it, hello Jack, save that out. And now we wanna bring in use effect. Use effect takes a function as well as the dependency array. If the dependency array is empty, then that use effect will only run the first time a component is loaded, which is exactly what we want. So let's do fetch then and do data.json, the file we just created. Let's get rid of that sidebar. And then do then. Now we're gonna have a response. So we need to get the JSON from that response. And then after that, we're going to have some data. And with that data, then we can say set payload and give it that data. And that's fine. And now let's go over here, let's actually put it into a div or something like that. Actually, let's put it into one, one of our spiffy boxes. All right, json.stringify object, that payload. If I were to just put payload in there, React would blow up. That's not a TypeScript thing, that's just basic React. You can't give React a bare object. So in this case, we're gonna turn it into a string so we can see it, and there we go. No problem, easy peasy, got your connection to a server right there. Okay, so this is how you do basic use state. Let's talk about a, another one. Let's talk about use reducer, a much more interesting variant of a way to store your data. So let's go and create a new list of to-dos. So we'll have to-dos and then dispatch is what you get back from a use reducer. Now use reducer takes two arguments. The first is a reducer function that if you're familiar with array.reduce or Redux should be familiar to you. The first is the current state and then the second argument to that function is the uh, action. And then the second argument for use reducer is the, the starting initial state. So let's we'll start off with an empty array. We're gonna start off with an empty array of to-dos and we'll create our function. So that is gonna have a list of to-dos. So we need a to-do array. We haven't defined to-do yet, so let's jump up here and do that. And our to-do will have an ID, which is a number. It'll have a done, which is a Boolean, and it'll have some text, which is a string. And let's see, the next thing we want is an action. 
And that action is going to have an action type. And that really, you know, I just give it action type as a name. You can call it anything you want. But basically, so we want to define an action type. And it's basically just going to be a set of different actions. So let's see, type. Let's see, we're going to add a to do. So we're going to have to have some text. What, you, what do you want to add? And then let's see, let's put pipe on there. And we'll have another one for remove or delete, whichever way you want to call it. And that would have an ID, which would be the number. Looking pretty good. Okay, great. So now we've got our to do's and we've got our action. Let's go and implement on this. So well, actually, let's go and bring in user reducer first. So I'm seeing that little red squiggly. All right, cool. So now we need to do a big old switch statement in here. So that switch is going to switch on the action type. And for the case, really nice. TypeScript is giving us some awesome hinting here. So we'll do add first. In the case of an add, we want to take our existing array of to-dos and create a new array of to-dos. And in there, it's going to have an ID, which would be the current to-dos.length. It would have a, well, actually, sorry. Uh, let's call this state, just to differentiate it away from to-dos. And we'd have the text, which is coming in as the action text, and then done, which will start off as false. I'm not actually going to implement on any of that. Okay. So now we have a case for remove, at which point we're going to re return the state where we filter out. And we've got our to-do values in there. So we're going to take the ID, and we're going to say that if the ID is not equal to the action ID, meaning the one that we're going to remove, then it's okay. So we filter out everything but the one that we are going to remove. And then finally, we have a default case, which will just throw a new error. It's a little bit different from Redux. If you're familiar with Redux, in a Redux reducer, you return the existing state as the default case. In this case, they just throw an error. So, all right, let's take a look at that. We got our to-dos, we got our dispatch. Looks like we're good to go. Let's go down here and create a heading for our to-dos section. Maybe add a little space in here so we can see things a little better. And first, let's iterate through our list of to-dos. Use a good old map. And we'll get our to-do, create a div, where the key is the to-do ID. And then we'll put in the to-do text. And then we'll put on that a button. We'll call it remove. And the click handler for that is going to dispatch a new event to that reducer. So let's take a look. If we do type, again, we're going to get that awesome hinting. So we're going to do remove. And then once we've dis uh, said remove, it's great. We can actually get some more hinting and it knows that the only valid value there is an ID. So we give it our to-do ID and we're good to go. Cool. Nice. Uh, now that that's done, let's go and make a new div where we're going to put our input. And that input is going to be there for uh, adding a new to-do. So let's call it type equals text. And let's say that we have a ref. And that ref is to the new to do ref. Okay. And then we're going to need a button as well. And the on click of that button is going to call on add to do. And we'll call that add to do. So let's go and implement on this. First, we need our ref. So the way that we do that in TypeScript is, again, we use, use ref as you normally would, but we want to bring that generic syntax in. And then in this case, it's an input item. So we're going to do HTML input element. And then we say no. So that's the initial state of that. All right. And then we did our click handler. So let's create that on, what do we call it? On add to do. So let's do that. 
use callback. We need to get a function and then also a dependency array. This one is not going to change over time because it's always just going to use dispatch. Although, you know, we could put dispatch in there, but that's that's fine. That's always going to remain the same. So dispatch. And then again, we can put in type. Let's see. Ah, excellent hinting. Get that text in there. So let's see. Text is, in this case, the new to do ref dot current dot value. But now it's giving us some grief saying that, well, that could be null, my friend. So let's make sure that it isn't. Let's put a conditional around that. And then TypeScript is smart enough to know that within that conditional, it has to be there. So that's nice. And finally, we'll go and set the value to an empty array. Cool. Nice. All right. So here you go. Get pizza. Excellent. Nice. And remove. Awesome. So now we have a nice little to-do system. Good to go. All right. So in the next video, we are going to look into the tricky business of sending set state actions down into subcomponents, as well as detailed HTML props, which are very important if you want to do your own design system. In the meantime, if you like the video, be sure to hit that like button. If you really like the video, hit the subscribe button. Click on the bell and you'll be notified the next time a new No BS TS video arrives.